So the next few sections are looking at polynomials. So a polynomial is an expression with only whole non-negative exponents. So first we'll, we're just going to look at some of these examples and see if we can determine is each a polynomial? If so, what's the degree, etc. So when I'm making this decision, I'm looking at the expression and I'm determining does it have only whole non-negative exponents. So when I'm looking at the exponents here, let's see, I have a 5, a 3, and then here I have a constant. So if you wanted to, you could include there an x to the power 0. Because if you remember, an x to the power 0 is equal to 1, okay? So what are my exponents? So my exponents, I have a 5, a 0, and a 3. So are these all whole non-negative numbers? Yes, they are. So my conclusion would be, yes, this is a polynomial. So that's the answer to the first question. Second question was, what's the degree? So here's a little definition. The degree, I'm looking for the highest exponent. And so I can see here, the highest exponent is five. So I would say the degree is 5. Okay, what else? It says write in standard form. So how do I do that? I need to arrange this in descending powers. Okay, so to write my polynomial in standard form, Let's see, I would have negative 2x to the fifth plus 4x cubed minus 3. Descending powers. Okay, here's the next one. So is it a polynomial? So I can start by looking at the exponents. So here I have an implied x to the 0. So I've got 0, 4, 1, 2, and 6. These are all whole non-negative. So I'd say yes, it is a polynomial. Okay, what is its degree? So the highest of these exponents, let's see, 6. Degree would be 6. Let me write the standard form by arranging this in descending powers. I'd have negative 5z to the 6th plus 2z to the 4th that term and that term. Let's see, plus z squared minus 3z plus 8. There it is in descending powers. What about this one? So this one I have a fraction, but you have to be careful. So do you remember how this works? So how can I write fractions as exponents? So x to the negative 1 is equivalent to 1 over x. x to the negative 2 is 1 over x squared. x to the negative 3 is 1 over x cubed, etc. So in other words, I can actually write this one as 2 times x to the negative 1. So the exponent here is negative 1. So this is not 
a polynomial because I have a negative exponent. Okay? So this is kind of side work. That's just remembering the rules. Let's see if there was anything else. I was going to say, let's go ahead and do the rest of these and then we'll go back. So what about this one? So here's something else. Do you remember how these fractional exponents work? y to the 1 half is the same as the square root of y. y to the 1 third is the cube root of y. y to the 1 fourth, the fourth root of y, etc. So actually when I have a fractional exponent here, or a root, this is not a polynomial, right? Because in order for uh, my expression to qualify as a polynomial, the exponents have to be whole numbers. A half is not a whole number. Okay, what about this next one? Okay, what are the exponents? Let's see, two and one, whole non-negative exponents is a polynomial. The degree is the highest exponent, 2. And it's already in standard form. It's an easy one. Let me compare 6 and 7. So be careful here. See how the x squared is in the numerator? I could write that expression as 1 fifth times x squared. Versus number 7, this is 5x to the negative 2. So you see how in number 6, this is a polynomial. The exponent is 2. That's a whole non-negative exponent. Versus 7 is not a polynomial because the exponent is actually a negative number. Okay, so the one that is a polynomial, let me see, the degree would be 2, and it's already in standard form. There's only one term. This is an interesting one. So what about just the number 6? Well, remember that rule, x to the 0 is 1. So isn't 6 the same as 6 times x to the 0? Because that's just 6 times 1. So actually, this is a polynomial, interestingly enough, because my exponents are whole non-negative numbers. It's just that the degree is 0. Okay? It's already in standard form. Okay, then there was one thing I was going to go back and mention. So maybe I'll write these, these terms like right here. So like these would be some little definitions. For polynomials, so if I have a polynomial that has only one term, we call that a monomial. If my polynomial has two terms, it's called a binomial. Three terms? You guessed it, trinomial. And then any, any uh, polynomial with more, more than three terms, we just say it's a, a polynomial in general. Okay, so these names, monomial, binomial, trinomial, are special names given to polynomials that have specifically one, two, or three terms. So let me just look back at these 
that we did. And let's see if any of those get these special names. So this guy was a polynomial. Let's see, it has one, two, three terms. So I call this specifically a trinomial. Let's see, number two is a polynomial. One, two, three, four, five terms. So that doesn't have a special name. We just call it a polynomial. Okay, number five, polynomial, two terms. This one would have the special name binomial. Number six is a polynomial with only one term. So I'd call this one a monomial. And here's another one term polynomial. It would be called a, mo a monomial. Okay, so those are some of the basics, just class of, uh, classification. So what about some simplifying? So we've already kind of done this. This is just a matter of combining like terms. Okay, so let's see what I've got. I've got x cubed. Let's see, that's the only x cubed term. What else do I have? I've got uh, x squared. So that's the only x squared term. See, two x's minus four x's. That's minus two x's. Plus two minus two cancels at zero. That was pretty easy then. Here we go. Looks more interesting. B squareds. Okay, should we group them together first? So I've got three eighths b squared, five sixths b squared. I've got minus three fifths b plus two fifteenths b. I guess these guys cancel. Plus one and minus one. Make sure I copied that all down correctly. Looks like it. Okay. So now I gotta combine the like terms. So these and these. Okay, let's start with that first set. So I have eight and six. So two times four and two times three. So what would the LCD be? So I'd have to add in a three on that guy and a four on that guy. So we said three for that one. And a four for that. Second one here is a little easier. I can see the LCD for that guy is going to be 15. Three and a three. Okay, so I've got nine twenty fourths b squared, twenty twenty fourths b squared, minus nine fifteenths b plus two fifteenths b. So I've got twenty nine twenty fourths b squared minus seven fifteenths b. Let's make sure we got that right. 
So 9 plus 20, 29 20 fourths. Negative 9 plus 2, negative 7 15 Okay. And there we have it. Okay, let's look for like terms here. So what do we have? We've got x, y's. What else do we have? x squared, y squared, and constants. Okie dokie, so let's look at our reds, our x, y's. So negative 12 of those. What about our yellows? So negative one minus another three. So minus four x squared, y squared. And then our constants, seven plus three, 10. Not too bad. Another subtraction. So here I have this negative in front of the whole parentheses. So actually there's an implied negative one here. So what I would do is I would start by distributing that negative one through. So I've got 6n squared minus 2n minus 3 minus 2n squared plus 3n minus 4. So that negative in front changes all the signs. Then I can go ahead and combine my like terms. 4n squared plus an n minus a 7. Subtract. 3x squared plus 2x minus 1 from 5x plus 2. Okay, so I have 5x plus 2. I have to subtract the whole expression. So don't forget that parentheses there. And then again, I'm distributing that negative 1. So changing all the signs. And then just combining like terms. Okay. 